Welcome to a tutorial on HTML basics as part of our MSET course. In this little tutorial, I'm showcasing some of the terminology here in slides, but I'm not even going to go out to a full presentation, so pardon the appearance of the editor here. I want to be able to flip back and forth between pages. And so in terms of coding 101, all pages have some basic elements. And here I'm speaking of web pages. They're all driven by HTML or hypertext markup language. Um, hypertext, hypertext markup language is not truly a language um, when you're comparing it to like C++ or whatever. Um, it's rather a syntax for structure of web pages. Uh, the second thing that is really common in, um, in all modern websites is um, cascading style sheets. And the third thing, JavaScript, most common um, scripting tool out there in traditional websites. And what does WordPress use? WordPress uses a combination of HTML, CSS, JavaScripting, and PHP and MySQL. We're going to talk about those more in a moment, so hold on to that. The current standards for HTML is HTML5. The current standard for CSS is CSS3, although you will find a ton of variations on the internet. Also know that um, the developers of the internet, web, World Wide Web Consortium, are always working on the next generation. So um, you might occasionally find things that are um, being included or tested out in the next generation. Um, but currently we are looking at HTML5 and CSS3 for all modern web pages. So let's talk very quickly about HTML. These are tags that govern structure. Some of the more common tags are header tags. Um, and you might see those written as an H1. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the word title here. And pardon me while that box is looking weird. Let me just expand that out. And then I'm going to close that tag. One of the uh, things with heading tags, as well as um, any type of tag, is that you need to learn how to open and close them correctly in terms of syntax. Some web browsers and some websites are a little bit more forgiving, but best practice is always learning how to do it correctly. So this is an opening tag and this is a closing tag. I'll talk more about tags here in a moment. Um, but I like to think of HTML as kind of like the structure uh, of a house. So I use the analogy of a, a floor plan that shows me where the blocks or the elements in the house are going to go. And CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, are the mechanism or tool that we use to decorate the structure. And we can apply color, we can apply size, we can apply fonts, we can um, even work in terms of positioning, etc. Now, why would we separate the, de the decor from the house itself? Well, again, in my little analogy, you think about it, if I, ha I have a house, I can work within the basic walls or the structure of the home, and I may decorate it any way I choose. Well, the next time somebody comes along, or if I should change my mind one day, I don't want to have to rebuild the entire house every time. In fact, it's pretty convenient to have the same walls there. I'm just going to throw some more paint or wallpaper or images or whatever on to the structure. So by separating the content from or the structure from the decor, we can relatively easily change the decor on demand. Um, but not have to worry about changing the entire house and building from the ground up. Um, this is a typical coding piece. We start with an HTML tag, and whenever we have an HTML tag, we will close it with a forward slash down here. HTML tags build up somewhat like sandwiches, so you'll always have a start and then a close, but in between, you might have different layers. And two very typical layers are going to be the head layer and the body layer. The head layer is where we would put all of our title attributes, perhaps author attributes, perhaps meta tags. We would also have the opportunity to embed um, CSS or link to an external style sheet. And between the two body tags is really the heart of where your content happens. This is traditionally where we would have all of our HTML tags. And we would also see, um, in terms of HTML, in terms of structure, but we would also see all of our content between the, the body tags. 
Now, when we get into our WordPress area, we're going to see that the body has a few other things. Um, but let me, before I leave here, talk about CSS. There are three different ways of, of dealing with CSS. One is to do it in line, which means that we would write the actual CSS code right here in the body. So for example, I could say um, that this perhaps was an H1 and I would call it the color red. However, that's extremely inefficient. If I have all of my CSS decor in one line of one page, it does not impact the rest of my site. And that really is inefficient in the sense that I'd have to recode that on each and every page. How painful would that be? A slightly better way to do HTML, excuse me, CSS, let me grab that little guy one more time, is to embed it in the header. And so up here, we might see a whole series of CSS uh, uh, styles where we would see it starting with a style and then we would give the, the tag a, a particular style, etc. But while this is slightly better than doing it within the, in line of the body down here, this is also inefficient in the sense that it's tucked into this one page. And we really, really want to move on to the more sophisticated and more currently acceptable way of dealing with this, which is to create a separate file of just my CSS links. And then within the head of each page, actually put a link to that file so that whenever we wanted to change anything that is called in the CSS file, we would only have to change it in the CS file, CSS file as opposed to going out to each and every page. Now let me talk very quickly about WordPress. Uh, WordPress is composed of HTML, it's composed of CSS. It's also um, heavily uh, embedded with PHP or hypertext preprocessing language. This is a server side scripting language that allows the server to talk to a database. Um, the one that's more commonly used here is the MySQL database. Um, and what this does is it separates previously back here, we had HTML separated from CSS, the structure of the page separated from the uh, decor of the page. But now we've got our CH, excuse me, we've got our HTML, which is leveraging the hypertext preprocessing script on the server side. We've got our CSS that drives the, uh, the decor of the site, but the PHP on the server is calling to the database. And the database is where each and every one of your posts or pages is stored. So where is your WordPress code and what makes it work within um, your site? So let me drop out and do that really quickly. Here I am in my course website. And I'm going to go under appearance and I'm going to go over to editor. Editor is a very dangerous place. So be very careful not to change anything here. But these are the files that make up your entire website. This is your style sheet. It's an external style sheet. So anytime I invoke a page or a post over here, it automatically builds that page from a variety of these PHP files over here, but also this style sheet. This style sheet is organized very well. It's a professionally done uh, WordPress style sheet. And so it's got a table of contents and it tells you what sections do what. And the reason uh, well-written well pages do that is that you can see that they are indeed very lengthy. Uh, what they're trying to do here is call out to every language that you can ever uh, talk to. They're trying to address any kind of typography that you might uh, be invoking. They are going to look at a variety of different browsers. So for example, anytime you see this little dash web kit, it's um, pointing to um, uh, specifically the uh, Chrome Opera Safari browser world, right? As opposed to the Mozilla and Mozi uh, attributes, which point out to the Firefox or Mozilla world of browsers. So all of these uh, pieces here are just decorating all of the different HTML files uh, or excuse me, tags uh, that you'll see within your WordPress site. Another super important reason why you do not want to touch any of these files is that on occasion you do have to update your site. When you update your site, 
Um, your themes are also eligible for updates. And when they update, they just basically pull down the latest and greatest. And so if you've invested a lot of time in terms of editing this style sheet, it's just going to be wiped out. Um, I will tell you that on occasion, I will edit this directly. Um, it's important to understand the concept of cascade. Um, cascade means that whatever I start with at the top will go along. For example, if I had an HTML here, and I, I'm going to just, just do what I just told you not to do. I'm going to undo it here. If I said, um, okay, I want all of my HTML font family to be serifed at two, because it cascades, the sheet will read the first one and it will say, okay, present everything in a sans serif at 1.5. And then as soon as it hits the same attributes, and redefines them, it will take on the next one. So it cascades down. So the, basically the last one out wins. So if you've got multiple um, attributes or setups for say an, a paragraph tag, the most important one is the last one because that's going to be the one that will apply throughout. So knowing that it cascades down, all of these things are built so that um, they're laid out logically and they um, follow the cascading uh, attributes here. So how does that help us? Um, the first thing I want to do here, let me come back here, is for your exercises, we're going to leverage CSS in terms of a plugin. Now, again, we would want to use the plugin because we don't want to touch the original. Um, a, we could make a mistake, and B, anytime we update, we wipe out our work. The plugin that I prefer using is WP Add Custom CSS. I already have it installed here, but let me just show you in case I, um, I didn't have it installed. What I would do is come over here to Plugins, and I'd click on Add New. And if I search for CSS plugins, you will find that there are a ton of different um, CSS plugins. However, parts of the challenges of using these plugins is that some of them will um, add CSS, and in this case, CSS and JavaScript to the entire site, or some of them will add um, CSS to just a page. Now, this particular plugin, WP Add Custom CSS, will add give me the option of adding CSS to both a page as well as a plugin. So let me just go ahead and show you the impact of this little plugin. I'm going to deactivate it super quick so that you're not seeing it. If I go under a post, um, notice that I really don't have any other options here. However, um, and notice I don't have any other external options over here. If I go back to my plugins, and I go to that and activate my WP. Notice over here, I now have an option to add custom CSS. Important, if I add it here, this is adding it to the entire site, meaning that anywhere I've invoked a particular tag, if it's got a definition over here in my CSS rules, it's going to you know, apply that definition. But what I like about this particular plugin is the fact that it also gives me the ability to add CSS on a particular page. In this particular case, it's a single post. So go ahead and install that plugin and then catch up to me in the next uh, tutorial and we will continue from there.